Hello, welcome back. Long time no see. I'm Verity Babs. This is Art Laughs. And today I spoke to Joseph Parsons. Joseph, please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Joseph Parsons. Uh, I am a stand-up based in London um, and uh, just a silly little boy, really. You have picked uh, a poster today. Yeah, I think so. I think, I'm not sure it's a poster or an art piece, but it's very sort of traditional from the period. Uh, it's a composition AXXI. You can tell I'm very confident with the name of the title as I read it from my phone. Um, by Laszlo Maholi Neutsch. Um, who is uh, a, a sort of a, a, a Hungarian artist from um, the Bauhaus era. Mm. So. Also, I'm going to reveal that I said a poster because on my left, where I'm looking up the image, I'm looking at a poster you can buy yeah, it, of it, the artwork. So I was like, yeah, nice, a poster. And it's actually, it's only £30. <laughs> well, it, uh, yes, it's, it's a very cheap artist. <laughs> <laughs> where did you first come across this? So I, I, I studied graphic design, so I did a graphic design degree, um, pretty much knew from school that I wanted to be doing design, so I went straight into it, and um, we studied lots of different art movements, the one that captured my imagination most was Bauhaus, because it was one that used a lot of geometric shape, a lot of colour, and it was it's sort of a modernist movement that um, sort of had inspiration from like constructivism and stuff, and I just found it really interesting that... And also Bauhaus was just a really cool movement because it yeah. sort of encouraged women to get into art and furniture making and architecture, which in the 30s and 20s in Germany and sort of the surrounding areas just wasn't sort of a thing. Mm. So I love it for that sort of element until Hitler came down and shut it down. But um, Bauhaus was just a really cool movement. And I think you see so much of it in today's sort of modern furniture and, and, and design. So I feel I think it's sort of, it's a slightly overlooked art movement, I think. And I think it's, it's one of the most important ones. I love the Bauhaus as well. And I remember going on, I was an absolutely foul-tempered teenager for about six months after my 13th birthday. And I went on holiday with my parents. We went to Berlin and we went to see the Bauhaus Museum. And I think that was one of the only moments that I was even bearable <laughs> during this period. I loved it. It was so eye-opening because it felt like a museum not like museums were to me like there's a lot of furniture being hung up on the wall like it's artwork because that was what they were all about high art and painting is no different really to furniture making and pattern design for curtains and all this kind of thing and I thought that was really um probably relatively formative I think just kind of a punky movement that mm. before punk happened, I think. It's sort of like there were so many experimental artists that were just doing really cool stuff mm. and sort of wanting this sort of free movement that sort of was passion sort of led, but also incredibly minimalist. And for me as a person, when I was younger, running, walking around art sort of museums, I struggled with the ones where you had to really think and mm. deeply look at it. The thing I loved about Bauhaus was its simplicity, that you can derive beauty from it without having to look too deeply. Um, but I'm sure if you look deeply enough, there's tons of meaning. But I think it's, 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 it was good. It was, it was something that just engaged me and it was so crisp and clean and tidy. I was just like, that's, that's for me. That. Mm. Do you think crisp and clean and tidy, does that reflect kind of how you exist as well? Oh, absolutely. I'm very tight. I like my, because of just sort of bought this flat in Crystal Palace. So I've just had this opportunity to put all my own furniture in somewhere. Yeah. And it's all like incredibly clean lines. I hate like too much on the walls or knickknacks. It's all very clean and tidy. I've always, I've always been like that though. I, I like, I've always loved it. I remember in like school in like year nine, I did a sort of mirror that was inspired by the Distel movement. So, so it was just like, I, I was always a bit of a, I just want two colors on a thing. Yeah. Um, square and that. so <laughs> that'll, like, that'll do me <laughs> do. i think i'm just lazy i think I, this I, I like this idea that it's all oh, it's all this stuff no i just can't be bothered to do anything <laughs> other than a square and a circle mm. and that's art <laughs> clutter does take upkeep that's what they don't tell you it's all well and good to be like here's my display of objet d'art you got to you got to hoover that eventually <laughs> exactly that it's like a christmas tree at the end of the season <laughs> Well, that's the thing of, I, I don't view myself as like a particularly organized person, but I like that idea of 
it's you know it's simple and if it looks good and it works then that's kind of job done we had to do this thing in school where it was called ace week and they don't do it anymore where um you got to do an activity for a week so you didn't have any classes so some kids went to like they went off site to go and do a, a camp where you learn how to um oh my god that's my that's my fitbit telling me i haven't moved even though i'm not <laughs> i'm not actually wearing it <laughs> that's why um so yeah some some kids went off site that fitbit <laughs> jesus christ i didn't know she was doing a high jump today <laughs> really such a confused fitbit <laughs> Time when she pole vaulted over the <laughs> over the house <laughs> that burnt fifty five calories. Yeah, <laughs> winning. But yeah, with this week at school, um, yeah, some kids went off off site to do some kind of like team building stuff. Some people went and learned like some work experience. But I got to do one of the art activities, which was a mosaics week. Oh, we cool! To make a mosaic with the grout and everything. But fundamentally, I don't know why. I had to cut up these already quite little square blocks that obviously all fit together into smaller, you had to cut them all up into fragments and then work out how they fitted together to make a mosaic. And I was like, they're already in little pieces. So I just put them in. Made it harder for yourself. Yeah, so I just put it in as a grid. And at the end of this week, the teacher, who didn't really like me, um, went around and gave everyone a letter because she wanted to put all of the mosaics up on display and she would go around the room she got to me and she didn't give me a letter and said verity i just don't think you've had the right attitude for mosaics and that will stick with me until the day i die i didn't know you needed an attitude for mosaic making i didn't know that was its sort of vibe i, I thought mosaic yeah. making was you know something that happened for bathrooms but yeah fundamentally it works and it looks fine is enough for me <laughs> and and in a, you know, obviously in a much more poetic sense, that's sort of what the Bauhaus does, right? Is you, you look at it and I think we get worried about art is you look at it and you think it's beautiful, but because you feel like you don't know the answers to it, you're worried that it being beautiful isn't enough. But the Bauhaus are like, yeah, it's a chair, it works and it's beautiful and that is enough. Yeah, and that's all me really. I, I, I love deep thinking and I love that in like music and stuff. But when it comes to art, I just like... I think it's my attention span and mm. I get daunted by something where it's like a red canvas and however much I love how it looks and you're just supposed to sit and stare at the red canvas until it's sort of, it's sheer redness brings you in. <laughs> you are red and red is you. And then, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'll just be like, I bet that took him five minutes to just paint the canvas red. Like yeah. that's if, if you can bullshit your way through art, which is quite a lot of what modernism was, uh, it's bullshit art. I love it. I'm I'm there for it. It's art with a bit of bullshit attached to it. And that's the thing. I think it's sort of a, a taboo thing to say in the art world is that you know I I really like Damien Hirst because I think I think that it's bullshit and he's gotten away with it. And I think that that act in itself is so clever whereas i guess the Bauhaus sort of almost a polar opposite to that where you look at um you know a set of Bauhaus curtains or whatever and you go no that took ages and and well done like, yeah. fair, fair play <laughs> the thing i liked about Bauhaus i suppose the piece i chose as well is it was the starting of new techniques as well using like light um light boxes and things to sort of sort of montage stuff around and particularly um Neuge's work was with his wife. He worked really closely with his wife at the time, and they and they sort of worked on loads of experimental techniques. And I think that's 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 a cool thing that comes from Bauhaus too. I think it's it it did sort of celebrate sort of um, experimentation, and um, apparently Noige, as I've read before this, because I needed to read up a little bit because I didn't know a huge amount about him, but he was um, described as relentlessly experimental through theatre, oh, film, yeah. and everything he did so i was like that's the kind of guy i like to champion judging by hungarians politics recently i'm not sure if they champion the gays that much but we don't know about noise he might have been a champion of the gays so. a, sec a secret ally yeah he could have been who knows and that's the thing with with bauhaus and with like, constructivism and, and and this kind of generation of artists and makers is that it's all about you know what does modern day need out of art like we've we've got enough paintings of the greek myths and we've got enough sculptures of men throwing discuses or whatever like 
and, and you know what is actually modern like do we actually need any more of the impressionists showing women floating about in a boat what we need is more, more triangles um, more triangles painted on a canvas and whacked on a wall done <laughs> art next <laughs> and because you seem to so obviously you've got graphic design background but has this interest in art and art history did that come earlier than that or was that something that kind of came with that uh part of your education i always loved doing art in school like it was my one of my best topics but i was into really wanky kind of deep concept because when you're in your teens if you're not making a political statement about something i can't remember what i had but i I remember doing um just printing out a load of paper which had a lot of words on it and then cutting out a hand that had also loads of words on it and it's all monochrome and then they contrasted with each other and then I did one canvas which was just like this bleak tunnel I remember doing this bleak tunnel I remember my art teacher just going do you know where you're going with this like it feels a bit I was just like just let me work through this bleak tunnel <laughs> and it looked like shit but I loved it but I was quite I like drawing and stuff like I could draw and do that kind of thing but I've always I always I knew I didn't want to do anything academic because I wasn't Mm. that way inclined I was always a bit of a creative like I always played music I always drew and got more pleasure out of creating things than than learning things (laughs) which was very my GCSE results. I wonder if that's sort of like a relatively universal experience for comedians because I, I definitely went through a I love creating art and it's like there's nothing funny about it. But if I looked at it now, it's so laughably pretentious. Like <laughs> the stuff I made in art A level, where I was like, I'm really making a statement here in the, in this six form building. <laughs> you mentioned about you know not being so interested in, in the academic stuff, and yet you know knowing about constructivism and Bauhaus isn't something that you would necessarily pick up from just doing just doing some drawing were you taken to galleries and engaging with that kind of world very young no that that sort of came I mean my mum and dad used to always take me to galleries because mum knew I liked art and uh, both me and my brother were brought up arty Mm. Um, but I think the learning side of things and the actual like research stuff all came from university really because they were quite big on it in my university even though I was doing graphic design like you needed to know your your sort of art history mm. um, because designs came from that. Like, yeah. and without Bauhaus, we wouldn't have used words in an artistic sense. It wouldn't have been something and constructivism as well. Typography came from that, and the art of typography. It all sort of stemmed from the, these wonderful movements of using where words weren't just things that you read; they were part of the piece, and that's where posters sort of came from. So if you didn't know that and have a sort of appreciation for that amazing time that broke ground in using words as art. Mm. You wouldn't be able to have word art now in bubble writing in in, (laughs) in soft office, and you wouldn't have uh, Comic Sans. And I think that would have been a real um, (laughs) catastrophe for the design world forever. We wouldn't have had any of the graphic tees of the 2000s. I did did my dissertation on why Comic Sans is a good thing for design. <laughs> uh, which one, I think, I can't remember who it was. There was someone who used to be at Coventry University. They, we did like a, a, a sort of mix of universities where we all sort of explained our concepts of dissertations and yeah. absolutely slammed me going, you're wasting this one chance to write about anything you want and you've chosen Comic Sans. And I was like, well, it's still been designed, hasn't it? Like, yeah. and, it, and it was designed for a purpose. It was designed for Microsoft to to sort of put in speech bubbles to teach kids how to use computers. That was why it was designed. It wasn't and it, like dogs don't speak in Times New Roman um, was the sort of idea of it. So it had a purpose. It had a design purpose. The reason why people hate it is it's misuse, not because of its actual aesthetic. Um, and I, that's the thing I found interesting. So I think that, and I think art having just general humor I think I think you naturally as comedians there's and there's often quite a lot of artists that be, sort of um, become comedians or vice versa or they sort of straddle the two things because you can find so much humour in it and I th- I just found that a funny idea. That's sort of, that's such a brilliant dissertation. That's amazing. I love that so much. It, it was my highest mark of the year. <laughs> well, I didn't have a very good end final year. Uh, I didn't I didn't enjoy myself too much. But that's an interesting thing about um, yeah finding that humour in art because i've got to say the piece you picked relatively humorless 
Oh yeah, it has absolutely fuck all humour. It's the most, if you don't like geometric shapes, it's possibly the most boring thing you could ever look at. <laughs> Whereas if you yeah. the inner circles, hilarious. Yeah, the inner circles, hilarious. But it, <laughs> It reminds me of me because it's order, but it's chaos because it's all scattered in the bottom right-hand corner of the piece. And there's lots of negative space. And as a designer, um, every client in the world will tell you to fill the negative space that you put there purposely because you want to give content room to breathe. Um, so I like the fact he's just muddled everything in the bottom right-hand corner. There's a chaos, but there's so much order to it. And for me, that's awesome. I love it. You didn't need to do much. It's like when you see something on MasterChef and you see that people like just put like three things on a plate and you're like, that's not going to fill me up, but it's still beautiful and it's all it needs. And I think that's sort of what Bauhaus is for me. It's just like, it's all you need, but it also, it's, it's got, and you can have chaos in Bauhaus, but it can still look tidy. I love that. And, and again, there's not really any, there's no art from either before this or after this necessarily where you'd get, you know, you've, you've drawn in the main stuff and you go, that's enough. The stale movement, maybe like mm. that, that, that was, but that was very linear and sort of took the sort of Rennie Macintosh approach to like Art Nouveau furniture to a sort of new level of like linear. Mm. And I, 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 I like that movement, but it's not enough for me. I feel like there was more in Bauhaus that's more punky. The still is a little bit safe for me. Just saying. <laughs> don't, don't, don't at me. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> I'm going to be cancelled for this. Joseph, thank you so, so much for coming on Art Last today. Where is the best place for us to follow you and hear what you're up to? And is there anything you want to plug? Uh, always, always things to plug. Uh, you'll know this very soon. There's never, <laughs> ever any shortage of things to plug. Uh, basically, um, you find me at Posif Jarsons. So it's my name, Joseph Parsons, but I've swapped the J and the P around. The amount of times I've had to explain that after gigs, it gets tiresome. And people are like, can you just write it on my phone? And I go, yes. Um, <laughs> this is pre pre pandemic i should say i don't share the phone with strangers now i'm debuting at edinburgh this year with my show um so i'm going to be at uh, just a tonic um for the whole month of august in a place called the bottle room at 3 30 so that's gonna be really fun so i'm gonna be doing a hell of a lot of previews before that it's a show about um equality in sport so it's all about lgbtq equality in sport and as a gay sports fan, why growing up as a gay sports fan, that's been a tricky thing. Um, and also I've got uh, a podcast series with my friend, Joe Amsley, uh, Billy Joe Mates, and we've got a new um, series coming out in a few weeks. Thank you. This has been such a dream. Thank you so much. It's lovely. Thanks so much for watching. You can follow Joseph in the ways written below. As per usual, you can follow me at Verity Babs Art on Instagram. Uh, do give us a subscribe and a like, and I'll see you next time.